Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV. Behind me is a Cimarron stock trailer, but we're going to go over a couple things. We're going to go through this trailer in a little bit, but we wanted to talk to you about proper floor care on your all aluminum trailer. This is very, very important. So we want to kind of talk about some tips that we use, some items that we use in this process, and the importance of actually taking care of your floor. This is an investment. They're not cheap by any means, but what it is, is it's a high quality product that if you take care of it, it'll last you as long as you want it. A lot of it will depend on you taking care of it and maintaining the floor and the trailer in general. I always try to put it in perspective. It's like you going and buying a brand new truck. You need to rotate tires. You need to make your oil changes. You need to check your brakes, you know, flush your transmission fluid, whatever analogy you want to kind of put to it. These trailers are no different than that. It's just like the brakes and bearings on these trailers. Floor care is just as important as those. It keeps you on the road. It keeps your animals safe. And again, this is a high quality product. Take pride in, take care of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go over a couple things on, on what we recommend and tips and tricks that we've learned in this process. So kind of what we'll first do is, is kind of step in this trailer and talk about some of the things that we do. So again, at least once a year, if not maybe twice a year, the reason why is it'll, it'll really depend on how often you're using this trailer. But once a year at least, you know, you need to go ahead and clean these floors completely out. Uh, there's a couple things that we like, again, tips and tricks. One of the very first things is, is like on this one, this one's a stock trailer. It's on a slant wall, has an escape door. So what I would do is I would actually nose this trailer up. So gravity kind of works for us. So nose the trailer up on a stock trailer with this one with the escape door or even on a slant load with an escape door. That's a great area for you to come in with your power washer. Again, we're going to be blowing towards the back of the trailer with the biggest part of the opening. This way you can kind of start and work your way back. On these Cimarron's, there's a couple things that they, they do to their trailers that's kind of cool. Is on these stock trailers here, you'll notice, you know, this is, this is flush to the post where a lot of other extruded trailers will have some ribs. So that's a good place for like manure and dirt, et cetera, to get behind and they're a little bit harder to clean out. So this will be, this is a nice feature that Cimarron does on their trailers that'll be a little bit easier to clean out. Um, but what we recommend, again, nose it up, come in through the escape door. Very first thing you need to do is get rid of your bedding, you know, your solids, your bedding, get that mucked out somewhere. Um, then the other thing, a little, tip and trick that I've learned is sometimes there's still some really fine particles or some little pieces of, of shavings here and there. Well, what you can do is you can actually take a leaf blower and kind of start right here and just kind of blow that stuff out while it's dry. It'll be a little easier as it's dry to get out of here than when it gets wet. Or in the livestock world, our blowers that we use to, to blow out cattle, that's another thing you can use to get those, uh, the, the rest of the bedding out of here before you start power washing. But what we want to do is, is we want to go ahead and kind of start with pulling all of our mats out. Now, again, some tips and tricks, and we're going to have uh, Morgan here kind of demonstrate something for us. But I want, to, I want to show you one of these. There's Morgan. But our parts department sells these. These rubber mats are heavy, and they are like wrestling an alligator. They're not fun to pull out. Uh, growing up, I always got the job of cleaning out the stock trailers, which was not very fun because you had to wrestle these guys, then you had to put them back. But these are easy grip mat pullers. They're about $20 a piece through our parts department. They're, they make life so much easier. And Morgan's actually going to show us how they kind of work and actually removing this mat out of here. So, Morgan, if you want to, now this one's, this mat's kind of around a post, so it'll be a little, little tricky around it. But as you can see, you know, she's got two of them. Those grips, man, they're nice and they just pull right out and, and a lot easier to use than you trying to grab it with your bare hands. They slip out and it is that simple. Now, in that process of cleaning, 
like Morgan did, she pulled that last one out. I always like to start with the last one, then work our way forward. Now it's not a bad idea to power wash these guys out, but you know, pull them out, get them out of the way, and then kind of start from the back and go forward. Because when we're all said and done, we're gonna start at the front with the mats and then work our way back. You always wanna kind of start that way and then go, go towards the back. But this, and I'm gonna show you a couple things in this process. Now, as you can see, you can see these, this ribbed extruded floor by Cimarron. And I've got kind of a cutout here for you. So this is what we're looking at. We talk time and time again about Cimarron's and the industry's best floor. Four inch centers, it's a double tongue and groove interlocking extruded floor. So, for example, these 12 inch decks basically sit like this on the trailer and then they slide in double tongue and groove across the trailer itself. Now I always tell people when you're looking at these Cimarron's, now imagine on this floor, let's say we throw a mature bull on here, we throw a horse on here. Think about the size of their hoof and where their foot lands on this floor. Nowhere where they're standing are they not gonna have support. You have your, your four inch centers and then they have this truss in the middle that makes this floor even stouter than their previous floor that they had uh, that they had four inch centers as well. But this is kind of a, a good idea on how that again kind of locks into place and runs down this trailer. Now, one thing we're looking at when we're looking at all aluminum trailers and quality is I always tell customers the very first place to start when you're looking at it is look at the floor. That will tell you basically everything you need to know about the trailer. So if you would peek underneath this, this is what we're seeing from the bottom side. And again, that locks into place, but you can see how stout that floor is. And what some manufacturers will do is they'll, they'll spread their centers out, six, nine, 12, maybe even more. And then they'll take a sheet of aluminum and basically lay that down on top and then tack weld from the bottom. So if, for example, again, four inch centers, hoof size, now spread that out. So if this is a 12 inch, this piece is gone, and we have that aluminum, they stand in the middle, over time, we'll start, we, we don't have that support in the middle, so it'll start to pit or wave uh, in that floor. So again, it's an extruded interlocking floor, industry's best out there, and again, that's a great, place to start when you're looking at quality of trailers. So we have the industry's best floor, so we want to take care of it. So now let's get back to the proper care of it. So on this one here, we've removed the rubber mat out. And again, we would do this on this entire trailer. I'd hop in through the escape door with my power washer and just start working my way back. Sometimes it can be tedious and takes a while, but that's okay. Again, take care of this and this trailer will take care of you over time. So what we do is once we get it completely power washed out, it's a good time to just look over the floor and see if we have anything going on. Any, any corrosion, any pinholes, any cracks, anything like that. Because if you take care of it early on, it's usually a very simple, very you know, cost effective repair rather than going in and completely redoing a floor or an overlay that gets very expensive. But then what I do is I power wash this out and then what I want to do is I want this floor to completely dry. So this might be a two day process, but that's okay. Again, take your time. So again, completely let it dry. Then a little trick we've learned over the years is baking soda. Baking soda counteracts the acidity of urine. So this is a great thing to put down um, that eventually when urine does make it through your bedding, makes it through the cracks of the mats, and gets down to the floor, we're gonna counteract that acidity of that urine so it's not gonna eat at the floor. The other thing I've learned is if you think you need 10 boxes of this for the size of your trailer, you need 20. It's almost kinda, you almost need double. Now I'm not gonna go crazy, but I did get one because they're a little hard to come by right now. But, so what I do is I just crack this open and again, the, the floor is dry. What I do is I just sprinkle it down and I'm, I'm dusting Cherish out. The wind's blowing here a little bit. But basically what I do is I'm going to go in and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover the floor with this baking soda. Then at that point, we're going to start bringing our mats back in here and laying them down. Now, 
again, I kind of brought you a couple little things, tools in here. So these, these mats over time will kind of expand and kind of change shapes on you a little bit to where maybe you need to do a little trimming. Maybe it's around, you know, where this post, where this, uh, uh, or this little kick foot here, where the center gate goes ahead and attaches to. But basically a good thing to do is, is a piece of chalk is a great marker on this rubber mat. And then your utility knife to go ahead and make your little trims. Maybe it kind of bubbles up a little bit in a corner. Or I need to take a little piece out here. You know, the utility knife is a good thing to just go ahead and kind of cut around. Now we don't want a huge gap because then again, that allows a lot of that urine, you know, to find that hole and go down and in. Um, if you are having to do a lot of trimming or you buy a trailer that doesn't have mats and you go and buy some and you're having to do the trimming, you're going to go through a lot of these blades. That's just the way it is. Uh, a tip that we have heard is a spray bottle with a liquid dish soap and water, just kind of spraying it on there and cutting. We've heard that that, uh, you know, makes these blades go a lot farther along, but that's a good thing to have if you are having to do some trimming. The other thing is, is a dead blow or a rubber mallet. Cause sometimes as you're putting these in, again, it's, it, it, as you're working back, you almost need to, on some of the creases, maybe you'll get a little overlap or in a corner where you have to tap it forward. But typically if you get one side kind of started down, you can kind of work your way across with the dead blow. I mean, you can kick it with your foot, but this is a lot easier to do across there. So these are a couple little things that um, we use as we're pulling mats in and out, cleaning trailers. So a lot of these things you'll have around the place. Um, but again, you go to the store, you're gonna need to buy a lot of that baking soda, maybe don't do it on a windy day. So you choke the help out as it's blowing towards them. Um, but the other thing, when you get to this point and you get everything in, is I wanted to show you a used trailer that we have on the lot. And I, I wanna, again, kinda showing what proper floor care and what we need to do to these. So this trailer here, it's an all aluminum floor. As you can see, you know, it's not the interlocking tongue and groove extruded for like we had on that Cimarron. But as you can see, there's some corrosion here from the urine. There's a couple little pinholes, you know, kind of here and there. I got a pin here for reference. See, there's a little hole there. But on our used trailers, when we bring them in, we assess them and, and we determine if the floor's safe, if we need to do something different to it, an overlay, replacing. Um, but like on this one here, you know, we don't have, you know, structurally it's still sound. There's no bounce to it, but as you can see what that urine's done. So this is a trailer here that I would say to the next customer is, you know, you're going to have to keep up on your maintaining, keeping an eye on it and, and taking care of it. And it should last you quite a while. But with that being said, you know, if, if you take the steps and you are thorough about cleaning your trailer and you do it on a regular basis, you know, it probably won't even get to this point. Um, but again, that's a high quality floor over there that Cimarron has. It's a good thing to take care of. Um, but I wanted to kind of show you just for reference, you know, what can happen on, on a all aluminum floor that maybe isn't maintained quite to the standards that we've kind of set. Um, as far as taking care of your trailer. So that being said, um, I want to show you this uh, 2020 Cimarron. It's a 20 foot combo. And I'll tell you, if you buy a trailer from us, we're going to give you one of these mat pullers. Now on our Logan brand that has the sure grip self-draining floor that we did a video on a couple weeks back, you can check that one out. That's pretty cool. You don't need one of these guys, but if you do, We'll give you one of these. Again, our parts department sells them. And wait, there's more. I'll throw in the baking soda on this trailer for you. So now let's go ahead and check out this 20 foot combo. So this one here is on a slant wall. So our tack wall is on a slant. And then what we did is we put our center gate on a slant. So Cimarron does a really cool deal. This is a, a great little slam latch to lock it into place. Basically, I just pull that guy down. And it just slams right into there. That front stall is six foot six. Again, there's a reason why six foot six. 
on our slant load horse trailers our standard slant width is 39 inches so that's two stalls right there um, then back here you've got an additional stall we went ahead and put this tie rail in so you can kind of tie about anywhere you want we've talked a lot about the plexiglass there is the the rail for that so if you want to add plexiglass to this trailer that tracks already there but then this tie rails then it comes really important because if you have that plexiglass in there you can still tie anything you want anywhere you want rather than going around the post because that plexiglass is going to get in the way we put our optibrite lights in here load lights at the back as well there are load lights on the side of the trailer So one thing we talked about the other day was the exterior tie rail. Here's one of them right here. We really, really like this tie rail. You know, it goes the length on, on each side of the trailer. Instead of just a tie ring, maybe you have three or four tie rings. You know, this one here, you can tie about anywhere you want. We've talked about the bolt-on fenders that Cimarron does. That helps with cost. If there is damage, replacing those rather than a weld-on. There's our front escape door. So again, if we're power washing this trailer out, you can hop right in there. It's got a hand crank jack, single leg. This is another really cool thing that Cimarron does. So this is the handle that stores back behind there, but this will double as a lug wrench for you as well. So if you're needing to change a tire, you got one you got one handy. Well, right up front here, I'll tell you, this is stock number 5N200-099. So then as we work our way to the tack room, this is another feature I really, really like. This is the 42-inch tack door. So this is a big, oversized tack door. We have a three and a half foot short wall on driver's side with a four foot offset. So we get a nice big long wall in this trailer that allows for this bigger tack door going in here. Now you'll notice on a lot of our trailers on the lot, we put tack door access on passenger side. And that's a lot of that just has to do with safety for you, the consumer. You know, think about if you have your tire changing equipment in here and again, you're on busy I-25, 5.30 p.m. on a Friday night when it's busy and you happen to have a, a tire that you have to change, well, you can get off the road and access everything curbside rather than street side where the traffic is. So all, a good majority of our trailers all have the tack door on this side. But again, with that 42 inch door, and Cherish, as you can kind of see where those saddle racks are, this is a massive opening right here. So if you have saddles on those racks right there, a lot of times this is a smaller door that shifts everything forward. And as your, as your saddles and everything on it, it's hard to get into these tack rooms. So this is completely out of the way, which we really, really like. So you don't have to swing this out to even get in. But again, it does have the swing out saddle rack that'll swing towards you. And even at this point, you can see the gap right here that you can walk through. We carpeted this back wall, puts you some hooks, that way tack aren't scratching it up going down the road. And here, Cherish, I'll swing this in, and I'll have you step in here, and I'll show you behind the, the room that we have behind that saddle rack. Again, we've talked about it time and time again about adding a quarter, corner water tank that'll sit right back there. It's gravity fed. It's great to have along. It's 25 gallons of, of fresh water for you and your horses. Maybe you have a picky horse that doesn't like water from the local fairgrounds. You know, that way you can carry water with you, something they're used to. Um, again, our parts department sells those. Very easy to add. Put another set of hooks up here, carpeted behind them. You got a clothes rod up here. 
That way you can hang some stuff. And then we put a boot box down here for little items. That way they're not bouncing around the tack room. But we really like this setup on this trailer. This can be done on a 24 footer very easily. If you want a 20 foot and three inch trailer, Cimarron will build that. So we can com completely customize this trailer to your liking as well. So we can do this in different sizes. Last thing I'll show you is here's the blanket bar and a brush tray on that big door out of the way. It does swing out. It's on a gas shock as well. But we really like these little 20 foot stock combos. A lot of versatility to these trailers. Hauling horses, you can haul some livestock in them. If you want to throw a toy in the back, you can. That's the beauty about stock combos. You got a place to stay. If you want to throw a mattress up in the nose, you got windows to create a cross breeze. You got a place to lock your tack up, keep it out of the elements, and, and keep it safe. So, um, we appreciate you tuning in today. We hope that uh, the floor care tips and tricks that we know were helpful. If you have any questions, you want to come look at some inventory, give us a call. We can set up an appointment. If you want us to do a video on a trailer over the next couple days, definitely let us know. We're open to ideas on videos too. If you have some questions or, or what we recommend on certain things, whether it's going down the road or again, maintenance on these, on these trailers, definitely throw them in the comments and, and we will go ahead and address those best we can. So again, thanks for tuning in. My name is CJ Altenberg. If you need to get a hold of me, you have some questions, want to visit about trailers or this one in particular, again, I'll throw in that baking soda for you and one of those mat pullers. But give me a call, 970-391-0337, and Cherish will put my information down in the comments as well. Thanks for tuning in, and have a good day.